Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop this week, a day early to uh, avoid the winter storm that's coming tomorrow. Uh, weathermen say here in uh, my area, the lower Hudson Valley, it might be an inch or six inches. Who knows? But uh, two new comic shop news in the freebie department. There's uh, Cyber Force. I guess Cyber Force is back. I remember re I have the the 1990s Cyber Force. I think I have like all 24 issues of it. I read them all back then. Don't remember a thing about it. <laughs> Haven't bought Cyber Force in, I don't know, 20 years. But uh, it was always a decent comic. The other one's about the, whoops, the Valiant Universe. Ninjak versus the Valiant Universe. I think that's the movie they're coming out with, too. Ninjak versus the Valiant. So I guess is the comic book tie-in for it. We'll see. You know, also, dear, to, let's see, there's a Spider-Man comic on the back of one of these. Nope, must be on the inside. But I, I always enjoy uh, comic shop news. It's a good thing. And the first comic we have for you is The Watch Vark. Some more uh, Cerebus comic strips. With a cover designed uh, to look like a Watchman. I always enjoy this. Fun stuff. Just Cerebus in Hell. With the poet Virgil and Dante. Who was Virgil? No, Virgil... Dante wrote the Inferno. Virgil was supposedly his guide there. Virgil, was he a Greek philosopher? How come I can't remember exactly how to, to define Virgil now? He was a writer, a Greek writer, I think. Ah, anyway. I enjoy, I, I enjoy this series. It's uh, pretty fun stuff. Oh, and um, well, it's, I think I mentioned this last week um, when I said I thought my shop was shorted. That's why I didn't get it, because my... Um, uh, the, the the guy who works in the comic shop said, oh, we have an issue of uh, Cerebus coming in for you next week. I thought that meant it was supposed to be in this week, but it, was, but it wasn't in, because that's usually when they tell me when, you know, something shorted. But it turns out that this was actually shipped early, because uh, Dave Sim does a uh, weekly YouTube video. And this was actually supposed to ship on the last Wednesday of January, but Diamond shipped it anyway. They just made a mistake and shipped it. So uh, that's why we have it on the first Wednesday of January and not the last. Uh, new issue of Cerebus, Watchvark. And next we have the latest issue of The Walking Dead, New World Order. One of six. We got a new cover here. What are they, trying to do a Star Wars tie-in cover? Because they're looking a little bit like Stormtroopers, aren't they? <laughs> uh, I... That's an odd cover for The Walking Dead. I guess they're they're, they're doing something new, but our, our group of explorers just reached some new people they're uh, they're trying to hook up with and maybe make peace with, and we'll see. Uh, you know The Walking Dead, story of a zombie post-apocalypse, but uh, it's mostly about survival and human society rather than you know zombies just attacking all the time. So. Uh, if, if, you, if you don't know what The Walking Dead is by issue 175 and that TV show, uh, I can't help you. <laughs> and Birthright is it back for another issue, issue 29. $3.99, all the Skybound books went up in price. Guess it was inevitable. I think that's supposed to be an old tin type photograph. Near as I can tell. But that, just the, I think, I don't know, the, the color of that frame looks really that red rust color the inside kind of looks like a tin type photograph but i'm not sure and, and no one smiled like that in tin type photographs because uh the exposures were too long so everybody had a closed mouth straight face in those old timey photos but um i i guess that's what the theme of the cover is but anyway birthright's a good book last week oh big train crash at the end of last issue and this, like, mercenary SWAT team is coming after our magical heroes. But they know they're magical heroes, so they're prepared for whatever. And um, Mikey here, our lead, is getting his mind shrunk by his uh, dad, who's trying to figure out, uh, or his grandfather, who's trying to figure out uh, what happened to him and why he's uh, gone evil. 
So, uh, good stuff. If you've never read Birthright, give it a try. It's a fun fantasy magic story. And our final issue of the week is uh, Paper Girls number 19. There was a giant robot fight last issue between the two different sets of time travelers. One set of time travelers wants to uh, use time travel to make the world a better place, and the other set of time travelers wants nobody to interfere in the timeline because it just might mess things up even worse. So those are the two warring factions in Paper Girls. Uh, who the paper girls are just kind of got stranded in time in all this. They're part of the uh, uh, just getting swept along in the war as they're trying to serve. There's, there's some more giant robot fights. There's our paper girls who are trying not to be casualties in this war. Um, fun story. It's uh, like it, for for issues and issues and issues, it didn't really make uh, a lot of sense, but it was still fun, and now we kind of know what's going on. It's the two from-the-future factions who are warring over the past with our paper girls just kind of randomly stuck in the middle. Uh, what more can I say? Paper girls. Good stuff. I'll give you a little look at my background art. A couple of things I did this week. First is uh, the inks on Dreams of Things 54. Just another one of my faux comic book covers. I'm working on this one's going to be colored in marker, so uh, I left a lot of room for color. There's not a lot of... Usually if I was going to keep something in black and white, there'd be uh, more black on it. You know, more patterns, more... It would be richer in the ink stage. Sort of like this one's staying in black and white. So it's got a, you know... That's one of my Monsters on Comics. It's in a little Mylar right now. Where I t this is an old issue of old wrecked issue of Swamp Thing or No Man Thing, pardon me, that my comic shop was thrown away. So I took it and decided to draw stuff on it. First time I've done one of these in months and months, but I just decided to break out uh, a page and draw a monster. And that's um, a black marker in um, a white pastel I used to draw on that. And you can just kind of see. Uh, See a little bit of the comic through it a little bit, and not through other parts. But that's that's another one of the little projects I work on. Oh, and here is my comic book thought for today. I just, I was just, uh, I was driving to a friend's New Year's brunch yesterday, or was it the day before? Two days ago. What is this? The third? On the first, I was driving to a friend's uh, New Year's Eve brunch listening to a sort of random Howard Stern show from 1993. And who was the guest on it but Mr. T? And what was he promoting? The Mr. T in the T-Force comic from Now Comics from way back then. And I was like, wow, that's how big comics were in 1993. That a Hollywood star would have his own comic and go on a promotional tour for the comic. Howard Stern was just one of his stops. I guess he was going to other places to promote, to promote his comic, Mr. T and the T-Force. I think Neil Adams drew it, even. And, wow, what a... I can't imagine that happening today. Despite the fact that there's this huge Hollywood movies and, you know, big Hollywood stars are out promoting their movies with com based on comics all the time for, you know... In those days, you'd promote... The big Hollywood star would promote the comic. How crazy was that? That's, uh... Seems like a long ago, bygone era now. So uh, you guys all have a good week out there.